Okay, depending on where you are on our marvelous planet, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, and thanks for joining the webinar. We're going to be covering a uh, little used and little known mechanism within CATIA v5 that allows you to create your own workbenches, in other words, a to customize your environment. On the left here, I, and I already have the tool up and running, but on the left here, you can see that I've got under tools, you select customize. You want to be in the document type, and in this case, the workbench for that document type or one of the workbenches for that document type that you want to customize or create a new workbench for. So immediately you go into the start menu, let's briefly review the two things that make this a little bit more efficient, and then we'll see how we can really customize it and make it completely, make it much more efficient again for a third go around. So the start menu is where you're placed to begin with. Over on the left-hand side are the workbenches that you have uh, licenses for, and over on the right-hand side, are what is called the favorites section. And the favorites section shows up under the start menu. So you can drop down and change to a different workbench based on this selection of favorites. Up to 12 workbenches are listed in the favorites. No more than 12, I should say. And what this allows you to do is avoid having to go to mechanical design and drop down to the actual workbench within part design. Now, most people assume, I was one of them early on, and I won't tell you how long ago that was, but uh, most people assume that commands are unique and sacred to workbenches. That's absolutely false. Commands within Katia B5 are sacred to the document type on which they operate. So part design, generative shape design, those two or uh, wireframe and surface design, uh, that kind of thing are specific to CAT part documents. And then assembly design, product structure, et cetera, are specific to assembly or CAT product documents. So therefore you have utilizing this tool, the ability to change your graphic user interface to be a little bit more efficient for you. Now, let me back up one step. As you're adding the items here from the start menu side of the available workbenches, you also have, and let me just select one of them, you also have what's called an accelerator. So you can do control and or shift and or alt and or select any other key. So for example, to go to part design, I might put control shift plus sign or something like that. If you use that, make sure that you're not utilizing something that's already set up as an accelerator or a shortcut key. Now, so that's the second option that gets it to be a little bit more efficient. The third and final option, and the one we're going to focus on, is user workbenches. So the workbench tools, generally speaking, are on the right-hand side by default when you first utilize that workbench. You have the ability to grab these little handles and move the toolbars any place you want on the screen that makes it more efficient for you. And then the other toolbars that you see are called global toolbars. They are not specific. They are not associated with any particular workbench, but rather have tools that are common across workbenches, the view, the view tools down here, et cetera, measure tools, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you get a little tired after a while if you're doing part design and you're doing a lot of surfacing within that of shifting back and forth, part design, go into surfacing, part design, go back to part design, go into surfacing, generative shape design, whatever you're using for creating surface elements, extracting edges, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And there is a mechanism that will allow you to avoid that shift. So the first thing you do is select Tools, customize, then go to user workbenches. Now that you can do multiple things with these next three tabs, but I'll show you the normal use of them. You can say new, and I'm just gonna let the default names here so I'm not wasting your time uh, typing here. So I'll say, okay. 
And there's a new workbench. Over on the right-hand side, you see a new workbench has appeared and it has just a hammer inside of a, uh, inside of a, a, a square imagery. And that is your personal workbench. All right, so you wanna use tools on this personal workbench. What this is going to allow you to do is ignore the now we discovered non-sacred relationship between workbenches and their commands and construct the workbench with toolbars and commands to your liking so you don't have to keep flip-flopping back and forth while you're doing part design. So anything, any workbench that has tools that allow you to work on a .cat part document can now be put on toolbars within your user workbench. And therefore, all you need to do is go select a tool rather than having to switch workbenches all the time. I know I've said that three different ways now, but bear with me. So the next thing you can do is select toolbars, the toolbars tab. Over on the left, are those common toolbars based on the uh, based on the particular workbench you happen to be in? So I'm, but but I'm going to create a new one. Before I do that, restore all comments, uh, all contents. I mean, and you can select any of these or any of the new ones or any that are associated with part design, and restore their contents. Restore the original position. You can add commands to the exi an existing workbench's toolbars and or remove commands. So in other words, you can add a command that is specific to something that you do as part of your responsibilities. And you can remove some of the commands on the toolbars that you never use by virtue of your responsibilities. And therefore you're shortening them and therefore not consuming as much graphic space in your in your uh, in your interface. Now, I'm going to start a new toolbar. I'm going to let the name the same, but what I want to do now is grab some existing toolbars and make them my own. In other words, I want to populate this new toolbar with toolbars that already exist within in this case part design. So in part design, I may say all right, I want to have uh, I want to have sketch-based features on my new toolbar, and suddenly I get a toolbar here that appears that has the sketch-based features, and it is replicating the toolbar that already exists in Part Design. I have named that. Uh, well, let me let me actually change that name a little bit to make it more obvious. If I could learn how to type someday. So there's my toolbar one, say okay. And now I have under the toolbars, toolbar one. So under my new workbench, and let me drag it out, hold the shift key down to get it horizontal. And its name is not sketch-based features. It's a name that I chose. I can remove things from this, and I can add things to this toolbar. Double click to put it back into position. So let's see how we do that. We've already created it using the simple tools within the toolbar tab and grabbing an existing toolbar from an existing workbench, not my new workbench, but part design. We can also go and grab things, grab toolbars from generative shape design. So for example, you can now populate in your new workbench toolbars that exist across different workbenches. So you don't have to keep flip-flopping back and forth, et cetera. Let's go to commands. Now, here's where things get a little bit weird, just a touch weird, okay? Um, number one, <clears throat> the ability to add and remove things from the toolbars is a drag and drop operation. So if I decide that I don't want a pad operation, I don't use, I never used it. Actually, let's, let's be a little bit more real, realistic. I never use a, a, a groove operation. Click it, 
drag it into this window of the commands that are potentially selectable, release, and it's gone. So you customize by reducing the tools that you do not use. And in addition to that, you customize by on the left pane saying, all right, show me all the commands that are applicable to the document type that I'm in. I'm in a .cat part document. So it's going to show me across all workbenches, the commands that are available for that. And I simply type a P here and go down a little bit. And I find that I have a, I should have typed a PR. Actually, let me type a PR here. And I want the projection tool. All right, so I want to be able to project uh, edges and so forth on surfaces. This is a generative shape design tool. Notice that it's not designated as generative shape design in this command tab. It's just a tool that's available. There's where the sacred relationship is most obvious. Those tools are associated with the document type and have no association to the workbench. So therefore you can do as you want. And in this case, I'm gonna grab with the left mouse click and hold and drag this tool onto my toolbar. Oh, gee, it doesn't seem like it can go there. Here's one oddity. You actually have to almost point at the last tool and release, and there's my project tool. So I now have toolbar one with sketch-based features up here at the top. I removed the one that I never use, and I'm starting to add tools from, uh, from, the, uh, from any other workbench by virtue of going to all commands. I also have the ability, for example, to go to view here and it will give me all of the options available on the right hand pane by selecting view. These are the global toolbars, the ones that are not applicable, I shouldn't say applicable, the ones that do not present themselves to any particular workbench, they present themselves in multiple workbenches by virtue of the fact that there are tools there that you want to use in different, different contexts. So uh, I can take anything from here. Let me just grab one, the magnifier, come over here and drag it onto my new workbench. And now I've got the magnifier tool on my toolbar. I should say, uh, drag it over to my toolbar on my workbench. And therefore I can construct any organization that I want for these tools. And the one most extreme example that I've ever seen is the guy took a lot of time, the, the engineer designer, I forget which he was, took a lot of time in order to populate his new workbench with all of the tools that he uses. He got rid of all the toolbars across the bottom, all the toolbars across the, the or up and down the right side, and simply put that toolbar all the way across the top of the screen. So now he has gained back all of this geometry area within the geometry area in the graphic user interface. And he just goes across here and grabs the tools. Now, having said all that, you may or may not be able to do this <laughs> uh, by virtue of the fact that a very sharp and very detailed CATIA administrator does have the ability to turn this off. Uh, I, I, should, I shouldn't say it that way. Does have the ability to inhibit this functionality. And therefore you may find that what we discussed, I'm on CATIA V5 R32 right now, which is CATIA V5-6 R2022. So I'm on the most current release that's available. And therefore what I'm showing you to do is what's available in that. Now you may find, uh, I don't think this is true. I've never actually diagnosed this 100%. You may find in an earlier release, if you're on CATIA V5 R19, something or R29 or, or 19 actually, uh, you may find that this may look slightly different, but if you are in here and, and you're in, on 2022 
and you don't see the, the functionality or cannot use the functionality that I've just shown to you, then something probably has been done by your CATIA administrator to inhibit that. To round it out, last options, I have large icons, small icons. I, I can turn off large icons to get small icons. I can actually modify the icon size. I can turn off tool tips, which is when you park on a particular command, you get a tool tip that says what that is. Uh, user interface language can be changed and lock the toolbar position. Nobody ever uses this. And particularly if you're creating a new workbench for your own organizational reasons, you may or may not want to lock it. Uh, if, you, if you share your interface and share your login, quite frankly, with somebody else, then okay, you might want to lock it, but otherwise you, you have no reason to lock it because you're in complete control. So again, tools customize. The start menu shows the workbenches that are available here. The user workbenches allows you to create a new user workbench. Toolbars allow you to populate your new workbench with existing toolbars from many different cat part relevant only in this case uh, workbenches and then commands allow you to add and remove and by the way you can add or remove commands to the to some of these global uh, uh, toolbars also if you decide you don't want the view tools on, uh, up on the top for example with your stuff you can leave it down here. It will still come up on your, well, actually we're on my workbench. So therefore a new workbench, these tools, these global tools will always show up. So um, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, I'll turn it back to our moderator to see if there's any questions. And uh, if there are not, thank you very much. This is available through the My I Get It interface, or will be, this video will be available shortly, and also on our uh, YouTube channel.